Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix Online Meeting 260. What are we at? June? June 13th? Oh, man. I've been thinking about so many things in July that I've forgotten about. Oh, no. I've broken up chat. All right. All right, everybody. Sorry. I got to fix chat real quick because I didn't push the right buttons before. I got so excited about all the things we were talking about um, and and uh, joking about all the things we'd seen. Let's see. If I, can I not edit this right now? Maybe. Oh, I can't edit while we're in there. Can I go back here? Uh, oh, I can't edit it while we're doing All right, everybody. Watch me fix the URLs while we... Uh, we go here, let's see. Oh, I can't change it at all. Oh no, I've lost chat. I can't change it while we're running. That's funny, actually, maybe I can if I can go to slides without chat. Maybe that'll do it. All right, let's do it. Hey, this is fun. Look, I don't think I've done this before, have I? Where I forgot to update the chat bar? No, oh, this is a new mistake. This is a new mistake. All right, time to make a new one. All right, not an old one. All right, well, oh, it says chat is disabled for this live stream. Why does it say that? I didn't do that. That's really strange. That's a new problem. Stream settings. Uh, huh. I don't see anything in my settings that says that. All right, well, sorry chat, you're not gonna be captured in the UI. I know you guys are still here. I just don't have access to it right now that's really strange all right well we do have chat today it's gonna to be a big black box on the screen for those of you um following along i will go back to the original slides i don't maybe we should just put the big now chat is disabled for us i don't know what happened all right well i'll fix it for the next time sorry guys welcome to have uh we do have lots of people in chat, uh, some new people. Michelle, who has explained the root of his name, and I think that's great. Oh, let's get into it. I can't believe it's June, although I have to admit, it does feel a lot like July, but don't ask me why. All right. Um, welcome all of you that are here, even though we can't see you in chat. Uh, I'm going to be, oh, man, I really had some questions for you guys. I really want that to, to be there now, but I can't edit the chat bar. Hmm. That's really unfortunate. It will not let me modify it while we're running. I think that's the issue. All right, let's talk about Wix 4, 401, that is, uh, where we ended up with that. That is done, it's a review. It is not a where we're going, it is where we were. Um, and we will do issue triage. We'll go through our open issues. Then we'll start talking about which five features. Uh, this is uh, singular today. We are gonna talk about one today. I think that'll probably be enough. And then we'll do questions and comments. I'm just gonna have to reread anything that people say that's useful in chat. And you guys do say quite a few things in, that are useful in chat. So I will have to uh, do that. All right, uh, these means recorded for those of you that aren't with us right here, right now. And um, I'm sorry you won't be able to see the chat in the recording. Let's continue on. How did Wix 401 do? Well, we released it on time. We released it when we said we would. And uh, it's been pretty good, I'd say, uh, at least for Wix.exe. Um, Wix.exe's uh, downloads are 1,400, which is about, um, well, and it says eight days, seven days, you know, 200 a day, a couple weekends. That's, you know, not bad. We were trending towards a little over 200 a day. Um, before that, so I guess that's pretty good. Um, Wix toolset.stk is at 447, <laughs> which means people are not upgrading, updating to it. Um, we're gonna have an issue about um, Heatwave uh, being part of that. Um, and I, I think we need to talk about it, maybe not today, but we need to maybe talk about ways of letting people know that there's a new Wix toolset.stk. Um, out because it's clear that if we just put it out there, people do not just find it. They keep going with whatever they had um, or whatever they're getting. So uh, I found that interesting that Wix toolset SDK is so far behind. By the way, Wix toolset SDK 4.0.0 has gained like 4,000 downloads in that time, right, Bob? Is is that right? I think we we said it was about. Uh, sounds right. Yeah. Yeah, it was about it was about 20,000. Uh, it was a little higher than 20,000 on the day we shipped Wix 401. I took a look and today it's now 24,000, a little over 24,000. So 4,000 downloads in 
you know, seven days is a lot more than the four four seven. So anyway, we, we've got something to think about there. Um, if we're going to have these releases about notifying, letting people know about these uh, minor updates, things like that. I know part of this is a, hey, how could we do that inside Heatwave kind of thing, but uh, something we'll we'll think about. Yeah, doing work in Heatwave, I think, is definitely uh, part of it. Um, on top of all the other things we need to do and want to do there. Anyway, I just wanted to give people a, uh, a view of the world and what's going on. This is where we're at. And, you know, hey. It's pretty great that it's uh it went out fairly smoothly. It was actually a, a pretty nice release. Which means we should then go talk about all the issues that people have found since then. So should we go jump over and do a triage real quick, um, Bob? Yeah. Yeah. By the way, because you can't see chat, Chris Painter suggested that Heatwave could help there with some sort of pop-up or something like that. And yes, we should do that. All right. Uh, sorry, excuse me. Still running a bit of this head cold out. Here we go. Starting at the top, we have five open and one closed. Uh, and the first one is a heat wave issue. Uh, exception thrown when heat wave upgrades existing 401, but then everything works. So this is clearly a heat wave issue. Heat wave issues are tracked over on github.com slash fire giant slash Heatwave support, I think is what it's called. I should have that memorized off the top of my head. Um, I was curious um, if anybody in chat, see, I told you chat was going to be important today, had opinions about the best way to handle these issues in Heatwave. Bob and I have gone a couple ways. Sometimes we've gone off and said, hey, can we go get the support? You know, when someone, someone in our support go over and copy the issue over there. Um, should we just say, hey, just take this issue and go recreate it over there? I'm conflicted because some people want credit for their bugs, and but I don't know how people want to do the extra work. Um, I'm just looking for input thoughts, any thoughts that people have, or there's like, eh, it doesn't matter. Just get the issue over out of here because Heatwave is attracting another issue tracker and call it good. Um, I'm, I was just looking to see if anybody had any opinions on any of that. And if it's quiet, I'm going to assume nobody cares about this. this is just something I've been thinking about in my own, own head. And we'll just pick something and make sure this gets sent over to Heatwave because something's going wrong in Heatwave and Fire Giant guys should fix that. And they will once we go reproduce the issue. All right. So I don't know that anybody cares. All right. That's fine. We'll just get this shipped over to the correct place and then they'll go fix it in Heatwave. Um, as people continue to do more migrations and uh, conversions... Yeah, 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 and and so and then Michelle brings up a point. I have logged an issue here about Heatwave because didn't know about the other one, and it is on my list to update the issue templates here to make that clearer. I I, I don't expect people to know about the other issue tracker because we don't tell them here. We need to solve that. Um, I was just kind of looking for the mechanics of do people like getting credit for having opened issues and having them closed? I mean, GitHub shows some of those things. So, I mean, some people get really upset when you like rebase their commit and then they lose the ownership of the commit, which I understand as well. They want to be the person that did the commit. They did the work. And then GitHub, I forget who it shows. It shows both people, even though like I just rebased it to try to make it fit into our code base. My, you know, face gets tagged onto their commit along with them in GitHub. So I'm just trying to figure out how much people really care about the issue trackers and moving things over. Because um, it's not like I want to take credit. Yeah. I think that, you know. As long as there's a link. Yeah. 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 So, all right. I think we'll probably just go lift this for them because I don't really want to make them do extra work because it's not like we told them. So, we'll probably go get the heat wave support to lift this over and call it good. All right. Uh, that's really all I want to talk about. This is some bug. We'll track it down. I'm confident. Um, project harvesting document output group does not use the correct configuration when building with MS build. Um, Bob, did you, or you had some comments and then this person just kind of resolved it by themselves. I haven't really looked at this deeply. Um, of course it's in document harvesting. So, so. Not because it's closed. So, all right, well, oh, the workaround. All right. So it's probably tracked by that thing. Yep. That probably makes more sense by three, four, nine, six. There is another issue that sounded kind of like this. All right, cool. I think this is a dupe of three, nine, four, six in the end. And then we'll move on. So, all right. 
Um, Heatwave for VS 2022 is still using the 400. Hey, Michelle, you are here. And yes, that is true. And yes, there's an update plan for Heatwave. And um, oh yeah, see, Christopher pointed out that there's the correct space, Heatwave support issue. So, all right, anyway. Uh, yes, so this issue should get picked up and moved over there as well. And Michelle, did you have any issues with credit being taken here? Because you actually have an issue. Oh, I have logged an issue. Didn't know my, yeah, so uh, we need to do that. There is a, an update of Heatwave coming soon. All right, nobody cares about the credit on the issues. Got it. Um, yes, this is a thing to do. And it is, this one actually might be done already. Anyway, there's things coming up for Heatwave coming soon. Um, but not yet. So soon though. All right. Uh, that was 7543. So far, nothing for Wix. Uh, 7544, a whip. Add support for multilingual MSI packages. So this started on a conversation and conversations and someone pointed out that they had a project that they had done all this. And I left a comment over there saying, hey, you guys could look at taking all the stuff you did here and actually bringing it into the Wix tool set itself. So they wrote up a nice little whip uh, which we should tag as whip. I, yeah, that's fine. And leave it open. And then they said, I don't have experience with Wix, so I can't, probably can't learn this myself. So I was going to follow up and see if I can't try to encourage this person to take what they know and um, implement it in Wix. And we'll see if we can't do that because this is definitely not high priority for me, but you know, it makes sense. It's a cool, interesting thing. And they have walked through all of the hard parts and laid it all out. So it'd be an interesting feature to have I'm um, done if we did correctly. So I think we should definitely tag this as whip. Probably still up for grabs. And Bob, can we put it in milestone five while I try to convince them to see if they'll jump on the work if we, you know, because we'll help them um, and then go from there. If it, if they say no, then we'll drop it back out of the milestone. Um, okay, but then it's not really up for grabs yet. Fine. Give it to me and I'll try to convince them to do it. Oh, look, I already did that. <laughs> I saw you. I saw you. All right. Um, so this would be, this is an interesting problem, but they've done the harder parts of it. So they understand the internal um, work says, Hey, is this the, are you the same person? Mer, 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 wait. Oh dear. I guessed on Michelle. How do I, I do? Well, I don't know. How, well, I, I don't know. I'm, these names are going to kill me. I tell you what, I, I love it. So uh, I'll see what I can do about this. So we will, we are more than helpful to, or more than happy to help you um, work through design. There's a lot of, you know, design parts in here, but there's already instance transforms being created. So this is a little bit more hard, the harder than instance transforms, but we could talk about it um, inside Wix toolset. And that way it would just be supported. And it would get rid of one of Bob's least favorite features. The fact that the build will output multiple outputs. You could use this instead and avoid that problem. Uh, that's barely in the top 10. Barely in the top 10 of things that bother me. All right. All right. Cool. Um, so why don't we, why don't we give it to him? How would you say your name? So I can, we can refer to you quickly. I don't know if I got, I, I was guessing well came, but I don't know why. Zhao, Zhao Xim? I don't know. I could go lots of different ways. I really shouldn't try to say people's names. I, I would vote for Yoki. Joachim? But I'm also you know, yeah. Midwest. <laughs> We're all guessing. <laughs> These crazy Americans trying to say people out there like, oh, I don't really. I want to do the right thing. All right. So we'll we'll go that way and we could talk about um all of the different things. Yeah, Joachim. All right, well, that was not too far off my first guess then. I should have just stayed with it. All right. Uh so we'll talk about that one. Cause yeah, people have wanted it for a while, be interested in having side wicks. I don't know that we can replace oh, um, that we can replace the multi output of MSIs because those sometimes have value when using in bundles, but we'll, we'll talk about it. All right, so we'll talk about that one. That'd be interesting. Okay, um, 7546 update signing service. Um, we need to update the signing service because the .NET Foundation has deprecated the one that we used. Fortunately, it was still up long enough for Wix 401 to go out. Um, so yay. And now I will need to do some work to either update to the .NET Foundation tool or, or just switch to using Fire Giant's signing system because sometimes .NET Foundation is just annoying. But honestly, this is the one service they provide that has generally worked. 
Um, so I will um, probably use a .NET Foundation and hopefully it's straightforward. Um, they said email. I was looking for all the documentation. And I realized you have to email this one place to get there. I was like, all right, fine. I'll have to send an email. But once I hit that point, I opened this issue. So I would remind myself that we need to do this in five. So you can go ahead and give me this. This is a build process goo and I will handle it. Is this, is there a deadline? Oh yeah. Uh, June 30th. Yeah. All right. Yeah. June 30th. And I'll have to do it in a way that I can bring it over if we have to do a 402 for some reason. All right. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 7548. Windows installer help decompiler helper should not be a singleton. Helpers probably in general should not be singletons. And this was found by one of Fire Giant customers, and Bob tracked it down. So we should fix this. We should fix this in five. Yeah, Hopefully they have a workaround for four. It Hopefully. is a helper. So, right. You know, and everything is an interface. So yeah, worst case scenario, you can, you could, there's a workaround. Your own helpers. Yep. 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 The yep, other yep. helper now, now, so that, that does open up for questions. Should currently there are two helpers that are singletons. Uh, the decompiler helper is extremely stateful. So it should definitely not be a singleton. Mm -hmm. uh, the other one has no state. Yeah. So, so I don't... it shouldn't matter. The purpose of the interface is that it shouldn't matter to the internal workings or to the people that use it. It shouldn't matter. Right. And then we just do the right thing. Um, so if it can be a singleton, well, then great. Then we only create one instance of it. And yay, we suck up some memory, but we don't create this object all the time versus, oh, no, we really do need to it every time yeah yeah okay well i'll take so a look at both that that's a purely implementation detail that we should do the right thing on whatever that is in that case so ideally the helpers don't maintain state that really is probably the direction we should head oh um, yeah for sure that in this because that's kind of magical really yeah the help the helper being a singleton and having state is double bad well that's yeah not just double bad, just wrong. Anyway, cool. Uh, yeah, so that's the world. This is kind of nice because now we're looking at things that are in five land. Like, what are we going to do in five? So this is good. Uh, that's triage for day. Nice short list as I thought we'd probably get through most of this pretty quickly. Um, I'll give Bob one second to catch up because when we go back to the slides, the next slide is his. We're going to talk about a Wix 5 feature. And... Uh, if you remember Wix 5 features, uh, because we are doing yearly releases, there's going to be fewer features. So it's kind of like, well, what feature do we want to take? Um, and Bob has, I think, one in mind. Um, and I have one in mind. And that's probably going to be the the things from us in 5. Of course, you guys might have something in mind. Like we might have gotten, uh, Joachim might jump in and give us something that's quite cool. And that would be neat. Um, but let's go ahead and hopefully I've filled enough space for Bob to be ready to talk about his feature. Da -da -da -da, Wix 5 feature from Bob here. Take it away, Bob. Sorry, waiting for it to catch up. <laughs> um, yeah, so so Rob said one feature and, and you know, he's, he's not giving me proper credit. Um, there's a bunch of features, Aww. but all gathered under the umbrella or epic of language simplification. Um, if you've been around since 2008 or so, um, I, I've done a number of, of these simplifications. Um, the obvious one is major upgrade. Back in Wix 2 and early in Wix 3, a major upgrade required upgrade and upgrade version element couplings. And it was awkward, and you had to duplicate the upgrade code, and there really ought to be a better way, right? So I introduced major upgrade to simplify for the extremely common case of one package upgrading another. Um, as I watched Rob do all these dojo episodes and go through the, the skeleton that you have to provide, some of these are just like, well, you know, 
why do you have to specify a feature? Who uses features anymore? Especially with you know chainers bundles becoming more common, a lot of MSIs, maybe most MSIs, are just one feature. Because really, having you know the feature trees that you used to get from Office 2000, um, yeah, you know that's kind of Office 2000 era. Um, so first thing, we should have a default feature. This kicks in if you don't author any features. Um, currently, that would be, um, what would it be? You'd get, actually, I don't think it would cause an error, but you'd end up with essentially orphan component. Uh, because Which I think were an error. Oh, oh, no, they won't be referenced at all? No, those are warnings. Oh, yeah. I think, yeah, no. I think you would end up with a, you know, yeah. an ICE error from, or an ICE warning about an empty you know, cab. Um, I'll actually have to look at that. I, th I thought it was an error. But anyway, if you don't specify a feature, we will give you one. Um, so that way, if you just want a single feature and you don't care about the, um, uh, you know, a feature tree, and you don't want to expose it, you don't have to do any work. You do less work than you have to do today. Um, feature was one of the things that kind of struck me when I was watching Rob's Deployment Dojo shows because it's one of those XML elements with a required child. So you always end, end up with three lines of XML. And that just it just it feels weird looking at um, you know what, what is otherwise yeah you know, twenty lines of code and ten percent of it is in uh, an XML element that you don't really care about. Uh, so the change in behavior isn't it doesn't simplify the language. It well I mean it does it it eliminates your need to use that element. Um, so that's a little different from like major upgrade where you know, collapsed multiple things into one. In this case, we're just getting rid of it if this reasonable default works to you. Um, next one, kind of the same thing. Let's provide a default install folder. Um, you know, typically, again, I'm looking at you know what are what are the common cases that we can simplify. Um, your your basic root folder for a package is under program files 64 or 32 slash manufacturer that's your subdirectory today that requires a standard directory element to pick up program file 64 32 folder which is itself a simplification that Wix gives you and then a child directory um, to create the manufacturer uh, subdirectory. Again, you end up with you know, three lines of XML um, to do an extremely common thing. So what we'll do, if you have a reference to install folder, and to be clear, I'm just picking a name. It can be another name if we you know, discover it during the WIP writing process. Uh, if you have a reference to install folder, like a directory ref or you know component uh, directory attribute, and you don't have a directory named install folder, Wix will provide one, um, and it, you know it'll use the the what do we call those the bind time variables to look up what you specified as the package manufacturer. Again, something you can do to date with Wix. Uh, we're just building on top of it. Um, like I said, the name can change. Um, and we will have to figure out one issue that I haven't quite solved yet is do we want to allow install folder to be a reference uh, directory for creating children? I think we have to. And that's just a question of so 
we have standard directory, the standard directory now understand install folder. Um, or do we say, well, all these elements support subdirectory? Another nice Wix for feature. That I will figure out um, when I'm writing the whip. See how that goes. Um, yes. Other candidates for install folder would be like installed or install location, things like that, right? Like that's the other ones out in the world that I've seen. Sure, sure, yeah. Yeah, and you pick one and that's what it is. I still think install folder is the best I've seen given everything. Yeah, I, I, that's, that's what I'm, that's where I started with just because I like the fact that it's, I'm wishy-washy about folder versus directory, but I will admit that one nice thing about folder is that it's a relatively short word, So rather than install dir, we have install folder. So I do kind of like that. Install location. It's um, too many L's together. <laughs> there, there, that is a problem. That is a problem. And, you know, my install location would be Michigan. Yours would be Washington. Yeah. Okay. Joke didn't work. Um, yeah. I, install folder is where I'm, I'm headed. And, uh, you know, when I do the whip, people will have an opportunity to suggest another one. But, again, we have to pick one. And I get two votes. <laughs> Interesting. All right. Yeah. Um, next on the list, major upgrade. Uh, this is, um, again, major upgrade is something I added in Wix 3. Um, it kind of grew. It grew more things than I actually wished it would. Um, but because there's a string, which is the downgrade not allowed message, because that's the default behavior, um, it's always required. So again, thinking, if you have a, the normal case, which is, yes, downgrade should not be allowed, and, well, that's it. That's the default for major upgrade today. Um, today we require because of the string. Well, what if we provided default localization for the core tool set? Um, today, we already do that with extensions. So if you load up a, if you use Wix util extension, if you use SQL extension, most of them, um, you get a default culture of ENUS. And you get the default localization uh, for ENUS. Um, it, we could extend that into the core tool set and provide default localization right now this is the this is the message. This is the string. This is the the text that we would localize, um, or well, provide default localization for. Um, and the rest of it would fall under the same logic as um, default feature and default install folder. We will provide you a default major upgrade with the default localization, unless you provide one. So you want to tweak your message, you can do that. Absolutely, you can use the other attributes of major upgrade. Um, yeah, there are defaults that some people don't want. They want an extra feature, they want an extra configuration. You can still do that, obviously. For the default case, though, we can give it to you. And that's one less line of XML. And the biggest change is that Wix, internally, is that Wix will have a localized string in it that we're going to that's probably the hardest part of the implementation of this. Yes, it is. It is. And, you know, to be clear, none of these are promised. Um, I have, you know, uh, like the default feature, I've actually already kind of looked into it enough that I feel confident it's it's a you know, straightforward feature to implement. Default install folder, that's a little trickier, but, yeah, seems reasonable. The major upgrade is easy the default localization that's harder um that is that's that's a bigger change you know it's not um it's all new and it's a little you know weird um so you know it might come out that this is too big for 
you know, to, to fit into Wix 5 with everything else that I want to do. But I'm, pr I'm fairly confident. So I put it on in, in the top five. And then Bo will be leaning on all of you with other language skills to maybe help us refine, will definitely help us refine the, whatever we do to try to come up with the string in other languages. I don't know, we might just try to go to automated translations and do that. And then hopefully you, other language speakers could be like, yeah, here's the better way to say that, um, to get us good strings and everything. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. I, I, I don't speak enough languages, so. <laughs> I wish I spoke all the languages. I am jealous of people that know many, <laughs> more than one. Anyway, like I said, language is probably the most interesting thing of this, but it sets people up more correctly. Um, yeah, and Christopher brings up, you know, additional things like we could do around maybe a package version um, that we could, you know, there's more features to do around package version. I've thought about being able to set it from the project line, but I, I don't know that we're going to get there in five. Um, so, but we'll see. Um, and then the last item on the list here is called naked file. Um, I've told Rob, this is just non-negotiable element name. Um, today, we're not keeping again, it. during Wix three, we've done a, a bunch of simplification. Right, so you used to need a component with an ID and a GUID and then a file with an ID and a name and a source. And we started to default some of these things, right? So file um, takes the name of the file given for the, from the source path um, as the name of the file to be installed. And then, oh, it, the ID also defaults to that. That was in Wix 3. That was Wix3, um, as was component ID defaulting to the ID of the key path, which is generally going to be a file. Um, and then <clears throat> a little bit later than those, we introduced the um, stable GUID generation. Um, so you could just omit the GUID. And if it fit the, the criteria for having the GUI generated, Wix would take care of that for you. Um, and that's all well and good. It does mean that you end up with, again, another multi-line XML thing where you have, you can have component with no attributes, one child file with one attribute source. And in a lot of cases, that's all you need. Wix will do default IDs and uh, GUID generation. So, you know, you you have to specify one thing because you have to give it a file. You need, you know, you need to give it a source for the file to put in the package and then um, Wix can default everything else. But it means that you have a component element then you have a file element and then you have a close tag on the component element. Three lines for one file. That seems weird. So what if we let you use a file element or naked file element? Um, file. Eh, we'll see. Um, wherever a component can appear today. So you could have, a say, a directory. You could have a standard directory, uh, referring to install folder that Wix will generate for you. Um, you can have a directory underneath it that uh, you know defines a subdirectory under your manufacturer, um, and then you have ten file elements. And oh look, we have default features now. So your files end up with components getting generated by Wix behind the scenes, and the feature automatically includes all of those components. No one's applauding. Yeah. Cyberspace, they can't hear you scream. Yeah, I know. Um, they also don't know I'm a dog. <laughs> the best kept secret. Yep. So, uh, you know, on the face of it, this is nothing significantly new, right? It, it's, 
We already have all the defaulting logic, but that changed a lot in Wix 4, right? So we, we don't default um, IDs anymore. Yeah, the, the, the weakness of some of the ID defaulting was that, um, like, if you, had, you couldn't have two files with the same name in different directories because they would both or each get the ID of the, um, of the file name, and you can't have duplicate file IDs, you can't have duplicate component IDs. Uh, so Wix does less of that now. Well, Wix four is smarter about that. Correct, exactly. It's yeah, it's Wix four. Wix four has it, it, it's not it's way more important internally, uh, but Wix has the concept of identifier as a thing. Yeah, um, and that's that's very really useful. Um, <clears throat> so something that this this seems straightforward. It's not. There's you know quite a bit of of work to do to figure out. Um, because it turns out component can appear in a whole lot of different places. So there's there's definitely a, a fair bit of work to do. Now, one of the philosophical level questions that you know I've I've talked to Rob about, I've, I I want to bring up here. Um, th this idea of a naked file, and yes, I will eventually give up on the name, um, is. It, it, it is not encompassing all of the functionality um, of, a it, of of a component with a file. Yeah. So one of the uh, the the big philosophical questions about you know a lot of these ideas about simplifying the language is are we simplifying it um, or are we coming up with or sorry are we simplifying a common use case or are we redesigning the language in a better way? Uh, because at the end of the day, we can't, you know, remove functionality that Wix has. Wix always addresses the complete breadth of the Windows installer. Um, so, you know, but if you, you look at component, you look at file, there are, what was it, like three dozen attributes between the two of them. It, they're they're highly configurable in the Windows installer. Um, so, is this idea of a standalone file? Is it, you know, a first class citizen, or is it a shortcut? Um, so, for example, you know, components have a bunch of attributes on um, that you know control like directory. That that's where the component is installed. Um, you know, it has uh, condition, it can address a feature, you can specify GUID, um, it can be permanent, shared, oh, shared DLL rough count, if you know you want to go back to the Windows 3X days. How many of these things should the standalone file element um, support? It's an interesting question that is going to be you know, uh, a big part of, of the web. Um, on a very similar note, do naked files support all the children that today you can put on file and component? Um, you know, for example, registry can go together with a component. Um, and if you want a component, well, a lot of people don't want components. They don't want to think about it. But if we let you put registry values underneath a naked file, we you know, would create a component with just the right shape, right? The file is a key path, registry keys um, as, as children. So that seems pretty logical. What about, what about com? Again, it, it's completely logical. Might be a lot of work and, you know, is com looking forward into the 21st century, kind of not. Um, so the whip has to cover, you know, some of the, these challenges and, and, you know, 
uh, start to estimate the effort required to get to 100 percent. I don't think we want complete coverage. No, I will say we do not want complete coverage. No. Um, I think this is – we're not replacing component and file elements. We're adding a new one with the same name because Rob won't let me call it naked file. I will not let you call it naked. <sighs> All right, fine. Um, and moreover, I think it's the right, it, it represents the concept of file as everybody thinks it is. Absolutely. absolutely. And, no one thinks of components. Yeah, nobody thinks of components and, first. And those who do think of component do not want to think of component for the most part. It, only want to think about components when it's important. So, th the, which actually is a, Christopher has an interesting point here. So perhaps file could have a pointer back to component when you need more explicit instead of implicit. So we've actually purposely never allowed component to be split, broken, or partial because of the contract that it creates with all of the things that are nested inside of it. So the idea of pointing to a component, having yourself get joined to it has been kind of a showstopper for anything in Wix today. We would have to change that stance on allowing a component to be spread about and not show that it is a contract for the thing that it is. Um, we'd have to change that stance first to do that. So then um, the next thing about feature directory component are first class. Uh, the thing is that we're actually getting to a place where we're like, no, they're not first class. Features in today's day and age generally aren't used. There's almost always one feature. And if you buy into bundles, then really your MSI should not have features in them. So that whole world of, hey, let's just give you a feature for free. You don't have to have this idea of, well, when would I use a feature? Well, if you think about Office 2000, you'd have Word and Outlook and Excel, which is always the example and it never goes anywhere with that. Now, if you have features, there's nothing wrong with that. Continue to use them, they're still there if you know that. But most MSI packages today are just one thing, they install the thing that they do. So those get pushed down. Then what we have to do is deal with components and the complexity that they introduce in the creating of software installation, MSI installation packages. Um, so if we can then say you have a feature by default because you have to have one, but you don't generally care about it. So you get the one for free. If you don't specify any, you get one for free. And we will create your components based off of your files because that's the largest resource group. Um, the, the most important resource group to most people. Um, and we create components from your files correctly, as opposed to you taking a component and throwing all your files in one component and then finding out that you have to split your component because it goes to separate directories and then just keeping your files all grouped in one component, which is the wrong thing to do. We'll just create very fine grained components for you everywhere. Then everything works out. People end up following the correct patterns in the Windows installer better and they do so with less authoring. So we end up leading them down a path that gets them to the correct place. And then we're still kind of in the space that I'm I'm disappointed in how subdirectory turned out in Wix 4. I much preferred the inline directory syntax. It was much more powerful. Um, subdirectory has not worked out nearly as well as I hoped it would. Um, so maybe there's something to revisit about our ability to create and lay out your directory tree for you automatically. But in general, you should install install folder with this and this, so we'll give you install folder by default. So you don't have to do that, and then you could just put your files in install folder and any subdirectories below that. So it, you should end up with a much easier uh, language. And all those goes could be achieved by designers. Absolutely could be achieved by designers, or it could just make the language easier to use. So you can do all of that. Or both. Or both. A simpler language does not eliminate the need for designers. No. No, no, no. You, you, I, 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 that's absolutely, I, I believe in having designers. I don't think we have to keep the, the language constructs the hardest. I also think the things that Bob has suggested here actually lead people in the correct direction. It's like, here, we just gave you all these things by default. Why? Because it's generally what you want. It's what you should use. And if you deviate from that, that's fine. But you probably know what you're doing at that point because you've started deviating from those paths. That, that was the key. That, the, my key takeaway from, from watching your shows was, and, and in fact, from writing the, the Wix 4 tutorial is, my 
it's sometimes really awkward to explain some of these things. What is yeah. a feature? Uh, again, you, you go back to off, you know Office 2000, and you go, oh, those are features. Um, yes, but that was 2000, right? That wasn't just a witty thing that Office used. No, that was when it came out. Actually, yeah. it probably came out in 99, right? Um, but anyway, that, that, you know, it's that era. Um, and, you know, you can say, oh, you need a directory. Sure. Yes. But we could do better by giving you one if you don't need to deviate from you know, a norm. Um, it also starts, I think, to, to you know, really show that the, the Wix authoring doesn't have to be so MSI specific. Um, you know, if you get rid of component and your files are just file elements, well, that's not very MSI-like at all. And it kind of opens up the window for you know, different outputs. So this will make it easier for me to do the the deployment dojo on V five, right? Um, yeah, I'll yeah, skip. I'll will. skip some number of weeks. <laughs> well, the, the you'll just have shorter meetings at the beginning, shorter shorter episodes at the beginning because you won't have to type out features. Right. You won't right. Have to type out a, you know, your right. install folder, major upgrade. Yeah. I mean, I can see it. You'll be like, hey, how do I have something inside my package where I select? I want these features and these features selected by a user using the state of native MSI UI. You've already graduated past the beginner level. And the answer is easy. Put two features in. Ta-da. And right. everything just works. Right. Yep. Group your things in the features. So. All right. Uh Bob says there will be a whip or probably more than one um for oh, yeah. this area. And I I did I under some fan. I it's the the <laughs> epic is a good way to put it. Right. The it is yeah. yeah. It's, 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 it, and this is not all that that we could do, obviously. Um you know, I'm 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 trying to be realistic about how much time we have, how much time I will have um, personally to to work on it. Um, yeah, this is round what three of language simplifications, oh, but least, probably the first time least. we've really called I, I've, it I've out. I've done a number um, of simplifications over the course of you know the v three dot x releases. There, you know. Major upgrade was again one of them. All the ID defaulting. There were some others. Yeah, and, and yeah. then major upgrade and and they default all... media or default media template now and things like that. Oh yeah, I did do that in four. That's right. Yeah. So yeah, that one that one came, that one came in. Yeah. We'll, we'll keep going such that in the end, what you have in your Wix file would be everything that you needed and nothing extra. I don't know. I don't know if we'll get there, but it certainly seems like a reasonable goal that we should be. Um, marching towards um well there, if we really, can do it in a really way a that the does road, the though well i mean so, well no some, some of it is um we can simplify by elimination and that's kind of the focus of of what i'm talking about here um what i did earlier and we'll probably do more of later is to simplify well also by elimination but mostly by redesign like one of the things we talked about, I don't remember if it was here or in one of your dojo chats um, was, oh yeah, it was dojo because it was talking about services. Yeah, it was a service. Yeah, that's right? a perfect example. Services are it, the current schema, the Wix language for service installation and, and control are direct uh, representations of the MSI um uh, tables and, and actions, right? The attributes are also very similar to what you express in the columns of those tables. Um, and it works great. But again, you end up, okay, well, you install a service and then you have to do a service control. So you need, you need the service install element, which is usually a little bit repetitive. Then you have a service control element, which frankly, I always have to look up, you know, how the attributes work. Um, wait, Let's remove both or no? Yes, that's right. I, I can never remember. Um, so that's an example of, of, you know, either we redesign uh, those elements 
or we come up with you know a, a shortcut for the common cases. Um, I haven't thought much detail about that, which is why it's not on this list. Oh yeah, Painter, we have no shortage of. We've seen lots of code that we could simplify. It's more of a how do you do so in a way that still allows the people that want the full control, the full control, and then how do you get it all done? So, well, uh, you know, it, it, and it's, it's a mix too of, of, um, a lot of this elimination stuff, apart from file, file is useful everywhere. Um, the, the default feature in soft folder and, and major upgrade are also useful in most every package. Um, but they're more, they're, they're substantially outsized in utility um, for your very simple packages, right? Mm -hmm. they, they were absolutely, um, you know, uh, inspired by watching Rob go line by line by line. Um, and again, as I started to write the Wix 4 tutorial, I'm like, oh, yeah, explaining all of these things is just like, yeah. Unnecessary in the beginning. It, it, yeah, it requires you to load a lot of context that just, you know, yeah, you see why, but at the same time, um, it just, it's a hump. It, it, it makes, it slows you down as you start. So, but file is going to be useful everywhere. That one I'm, I'm looking forward to in both small and large projects. Um, just because you know it, it solves a lot of problems, it solves a lot of problems in various ways of, of doing your authoring. Um, one of the Fire Giant customers that I work most closely with on their Wix four uh, migration, yeah, you know, they tend to have like one file per source file because they have so much scaffolding around each file, and so you know naked file isn't going to work for them except. Yeah, actually, it just might. Um, it turns out, you know, they have a lot of defaults that that we could absolutely hook into. So I was going to ask you about that. All right, cool. Yep. Yep. All right. Um, there. All right. So one of the things coming. Look for the um, look for the whips coming, and then there'll be plenty of places to put input in, and we'll have discussions about and lots of stuff. I think a lot of it's going to turn into this is kind of like the chunk. That we're looking at doing v5 we'll take more input we'll keep going down this route and hopefully this is just something that we can uh roll along um going forward so that you know we can keep getting better and better and better and and, and painter if you have wxs code that looks very unique then it would be a, yeah sure feel free to share how that uh does or does not help with the language simplifications and we can like kind of go through and see um that and, and i know you guys you wanted to catch up some time i've just been really slammed i've i got out of 401 still have such a things you, it's on my list to get to i just haven't had a chance to uh to really breathe yet uh we're still getting there and i felt really bad by the way i didn't put on i forgot to put on this um there are pull requests i've done a quick couple poke at a few of them there are still more pull requests to do so if you have a pull request out you have not been forgotten you were purposely postponed to after v401 if it was not a 401 pull request we got those very quickly i think um but if it was a v5 pull request you were postponed until uh, about now or another week or two from now so i am going through your pull requests and looking at them and uh starting to comment on them so if you had pull requests out for v5 some of them have started going in some of them have lots of comments on them some of them i'm just like can you please rebase because you got in a time when our cla bot was busted and it should be fixed, but you have to pull that into your PR for it to work again. Yay, um, for example. So if you have a pull request open, I've responded to most of them. And if I didn't, it's probably because yours is close and I just hadn't got a chance to get all the way through it. So that's pull request. I forgot to put that on the slide. I should have, um, but we are doing those. You have not been forgotten. You were just pushed to the back a little bit, sorry. <laughs> all right, on that note, other things people want to questions, comments, things to talk about, stuff going on out there. Um, I'm hoping in, I usually, I think we'll say in two weeks, this meeting again, um, I hope to go over what I'm uh, thinking about doing in Wix 5. Bob went first. 
Um, I hope I will have have enough time to sit down and think through what I'm doing for Wix 5 in two weeks. Um, that would be the 27th. Um, from now, I think that should work, right? Same time, same place, two weeks Yeah, we're from sure. now. Is there a simple getting started for Wix 4 to learn how to correctly create those? So if there's a written documentation for Wix 4, um, Bob's writing it right now. Yep. Bob's writing that Wix 4 tutorial and going through it all right now. Um, the, the Dojo is also another great way to do it if you want to go through it. Uh, he says that's humbly. a very long story. So. Um. Other things. All right. Converting into dark down. Yeah, I think the tutorial follows the deployment dojo in the end. Not, I won't say closely, but closely. Um, so a week, two weeks from now, 27th, end of June. Any other questions, comments? Or do you think we'll just pick it up again? I hope I will have my V5 a feature understood well enough that I could talk about it coherently, like Bob could his. Um, I will fix chat before next time. And anything else? All right. All right. All right. All right. So uh, we'll be back in two weeks, and we will do this all again. So until then, everyone have a good time. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye.